So I'm looking closely at this mechanism plate. Now, often with shutters, there is a the, the, sometimes the, the shutter blades are not, not identical. Sometimes there is a definite first blade and a definite last blade as you stack them in. Sometimes the tips of the blades are bent outwards. The first and last blade are bent outwards. So I'm just checking these to see if there's anything obvious here. Well, these blades all look the same. None of them seems to have an extra hole to mark a special first blade or last blade. So we'll take off the fifth blade and I'll just make a little... I'll make a mark when I get round to the first position here. This is our first blade here. All the blades are stacked up anti-clockwise near. It's going to put a little mark on the case at that point. So I know where it was. I think these blades are actually identical. So I'll just lay them out. Blade 5. Blade 4. I'll bring them in a bit where you can see them I suppose. Blade 3. Blade 2. And Blade 1. Now, there's a little kink or something in the edge of that blade, blade number one. Is there certainly some mark? I don't know whether there's a little dent there or not. I'll have to look closely at that. Um, sometimes you can, if there's a slight crease or bend in the blade, sometimes with the tail of your tweezer, you can wipe it across it and effectively remove it. Those blades all look the same to me. I'll just move them back out of the picture. And here's the mechanism plate. So, what do we want off here? Well, I'm not going to remove the speed trains. I prefer to clean those in place, unless there's a serious problem. And the reason I do that is it's very difficult to get your adjustments correct. And if you don't move anything, then you're not going to have to change the adjustments. It's generally speaking with shutters. If the shutter worked well after it had been serviced last time, in other words, if the adjustments were all made correctly, and it worked well when the shutter was clean and lubricated, provided you clean and lubricate the shutter, there's every likelihood it will work correctly again without any further adjustment. If, on the other hand, some bright spark had decided that their shutter was a little bit slow and instead of servicing the shutter thought it would be a clever idea to have a go at adjusting the speeds, then you're going to be in deep trouble because it means that not only were they unlikely to have been particularly successful with that idea, you're now going to have a shutter that's probably going to run fast once you clean and service it and you're going to need to adjust the speeds. So don't be that person. Make sure things are cleaned, freshly serviced, correctly lubricated and only then do you look, about, look to see about making any adjustments. Okay, so I've removed this lever. This is the lever that works our blade actuating ring and the blade actuating ring is the piece that swings left or right to open or close the shutter blades. This is held in place here on the mechanism plate with three screws. And these may be all the same length or they may not. So take note of the length of those screws. And if one's longer than the others, make note of where it came from. You may need to, uh, you may see shutters where people have marked it. Like that little mark I made there to tell me where blade number one was going to go. You can also use similar tricks to mark where a long screw goes or a short screw if you're wanting to put things back in the correct position. Now this plate's got a little rivet on here which locates it so it can only go on the shutter in one position. It's also got cutouts in the speed trains 
which may only mate up with it in one position too. So we'll lift this plate off. Looking at the inside surface of this, it looks a little bit greasy, that could certainly do with cleaning. And this piece is the blade actuating ring. That's the piece that swings backwards and forwards to open or close the blades. And I can see, you probably won't be able to see it, but I can see a dirty sort of brown, greasy yellowy brown mark on that surface there. That, that's oil and that would have seeped through from somewhere, possibly all the way through from the diaphragm or through from the, I don't think it can get in from the focus helical, but it might have done. Or somebody might have been over generous with wiping lubricant on various surfaces. It is necessary to lubricate some things in shutters. Where the lever here swings on this plate, it's quite dirty and marked. And it's likely that that wasn't moving as freely as it should do. That should be nice and clean. This little lever here opens the shutter blades in the B or T position. Um, generally speaking, you don't need to remove that from the plate. And you can probably see some very dirty brown grease there, complete with all the dust it's gathered up, which will need to be removed and uh, cleaned so that everything's going to move smoothly. So these parts all have to be cleaned with naphtha. And once they're all cleaned and ready to go, it'll be possible to reassemble things and make a working shutter of it. I have all these components cleaned now. Everything's been flushed out. The speed trains are flushed out with naphtha. Put in plenty of naphtha, work the speed trains repeatedly, blow all the naphtha out with a blower, and that's so that any oil or rubbish that the naphtha has picked up, you blow it out, you get rid of it, you blow it away from the shutter. If you just soak mechanism plates in naphtha and then leave them to dry, the naphtha will evaporate and it will leave the oil and the rubbish exactly where it found it. So you need to blow it away. While the rubbish is in suspension, you need to blow the naphtha away. Okay, but that plate's clean. It's ready to go. I'll start by putting it back together. And first off, I'm going to put the uh, blade actuating ring back in place. Just trying to see if I can figure out which way around this piece goes so that it opens the blades correctly. If I put it in the wrong place, I'll have to do it again. Wouldn't be the first time I've done that. And it's one coupling, that's the other coupling, that must go there. I think that's correct, let me see. Yes, I think that's right. The retaining plate's got a little um, rivet on it, so it only goes in one position. You'd be struggling to get it in the wrong position with this one. And there were three small screws that held that in place. And this shutter, those screws were all the same size. What I was most concerned about when getting that blade actuating ring back in position was to make sure that the stud that couples with the lever that opens the blades on the B and T settings was on the correct size of the lever. And I think I've got it right. If I haven't, it's not the end of the world. It's only a matter of removing one screw and uh, moving the lever moving the ring across and putting the lever back correctly. Get these three screws down tight. 
check that the blade actuating ring moves freely, and it does. Flip it over. Here's our lever from the top, and it's retaining screw. Now at this point I'm going to take some molybdenum paste, and put just this slight wipe through the pivot hole of my lever, and in the slot where it couples to the pin on the arm and put that into position put the screw in place check that it moves freely and hook its return spring in place. It's nice and snappy in its action, that all looks good. So that should be good. This lever here would open the blades on the B or T setting. Right, well that mechanism plate is ready to be lubricated now and I'm going to lubricate this with graphite powder. Well I've been busy, I've cleaned all the components for the shutter, cleaned the mechanism plate with naphtha, wiped it all carefully, flushed it all carefully. I've used graphite powder to lubricate the two speed trains, the self timer, and the retard gear train and that is ready now to be reassembled here's the case as we left it with the diaphragm all in there now I've got to take those rings off the back because I need access to the three screw holes to hold the case together but that's fine we we've got the diaphragm assembled, that's not coming apart it's just the control ring we're lifting off the back so I'll just lift this stuff away and what I needed to do was expose these three case screws here case, uh, holes for the case screws there ok so here's the mechanism plate I'll unhook the return spring, swing the arm out into the blades open position, start putting the shutter blades in place. Now the shutter blades, I've carefully cleaned all of those, they've been carefully wiped with naphtha, and that left them, uh, I could see that at that stage that they weren't as pretty as they should be. So at that stage I decided I would need to polish them with some Brasso, metal polish, and that's what I did. I don't know who that is singing out the window. Old bird or a tui. Let's get these blades in position anyway. Alright, and here's the fifth blade. You'll remember that I made a little mark on the mechanism plate where blade number one was to fit. 
And blade number one in this case had a slight uh, roughness or ripple to the edge. It had had, obviously had some damage at some stage. I'm not sure why. Right, to get the case on in the correct position. Oh, I'm just having a holding this up so I can have a little look. Where do I want to be? There, I think. There's a notch in the side where the uh, cable release would go if the shutter was so... Uh, Organised now. Let's get this case correctly. These three screw holes are probably not symmetrical. Check that I have three screw holes there and three case screws. You can hear an alarm off way in the distance. Alright, let's see if we succeeded. No, something's jammed there, that's not right. We're in the right position, but something is not moving correctly. I'm looking for an obvious problem, but I'm not exactly spotting one. Let's check that I have got this in the right position. No. Okay, as I'd flip that over, the blade actuating ring had moved from the blade's open position to the blade's closed position. So I've stacked all the blades on back to front it's always a possibility that's where the, the blades should have gone on right so I've got them stacked in the wrong direction This is one of the reasons it's very important to check that things move smoothly before you tighten up the screws holding the case together. Because if something has been misplaced, you may end up trapping a blade or damaging a blade, which of course is undesirable. Right, where were we again? Check this. Somewhere about there. Let's 
somewhere about there, I believe. Here's the third case screw. This time the blades close correctly so I'll just hook their return spring in place and that flicks open and close nicely so I can do those three case screws up tight now. And we're done with the aperture. We don't need access to those so we can put this lever back in place. And this piece. With the mechanism plate installed, the next task is to put back all the control levers that go on the mechanism plate itself. Making sure the diaphragm moves smoothly, making sure that the Shutter blades open and close smoothly. Right, start putting the other gear back into the shutter. Oh, I think we can probably start with the latch. All of these different levers have their own particular screw. So it's important that the correct screw goes with the correct item. Um, if you're unsure, if you been interrupted part way through a repair so that parts have become scattered. You always check to make sure, try them on the mechanism plate before you assemble the shutter like this to make sure the screws don't stick out the back where they'd catch on something. That's probably the measure of when things are really bad is if you put the wrong screw in the wrong place and the screw goes right through the mechanism plate it would actually hit the shutter blade. That would be somewhat undesirable. Right, so the B and T levers. Let's gather these together with their appropriate screws. The T lever, this little one here, has a shoulder on the screw. And then any time you've got a, a situation like this where the screw has a shoulder on it that the lever needs to be able to move smoothly around, you need to be careful not to over tighten the screw. If you over tighten the screw effectively what you'll do is you'll drive the screw down into the mechanism plate which will mean that the lever is now long, no longer able to freely move. And that's a very difficult thing to fix. And the B lever goes in here and its spring has to get tucked in around the back of that T lever. If I can get this in position. I think I've got that. That's it, I'm sort of... Okay. Now the small brass collar goes into the B lever. If I can catch it. And the screw holds that lot in place. If 
before I can get the screw started. That spring is pushing me out of place. Alright. Might take this little thing off out of the way so I can see things easier. And my screwdriver is lightly magnetised by the looks of it, just to make life awkward. Get this back in place. That spring is causing me a bit of a new problems because I've obviously straightened it out a little bit. It's got more tension than it started off with. It wants to push my lever away. See if I can get this screw started. Yeah, it started. Let's run that down a little bit. Hook my spring into position. Run the screw down the rest of the way. Check that the B lever is sprung loaded. And check that the T lever is sprung loaded. And check that screw again. Right. That little nuisance out of the way. I can put this lever back in place. and put its fixing screw in. That screw head's a little bit damaged but it, it did up okay. Which part do I want to put in next? I think we'll have the high speed spring. And so I'll lubricate that lightly with some molybdenum paste. 